Abducted by aliens, some call it absolutely bogus. But for a man in Mississippi, it certainly was very real. That's right. As Scripps reporter Chloe Nordquist explains, he's trying to lead a normal life while searching for answers decades later. Pascagoula, Mississippi. A small laid back town home to America's largest military shipbuilding company, Gulf beaches, and lots of seafood. God, family, and fishing. That's what it is. But this southern town was thrown into the national spotlight in the 1970s for a completely different reason. My name's Calvin Parker. I'm 64 years old. I was a abducted by something, I don't know what it was or where it was from. Back in 1973, Parker had just moved to town to work with Charles Hickson. Very first day at work, October the 11th of 1973. We worked all day, got off work, and he asked me, he said, do you want to go fishing? They went fishing on steel docks off the Pascagoula River, past a no trespassing sign when he says the extraterrestrial happened. And it was bl so bright it was blinding, and these lights was coming from inside a crowd. And then before we knew it, we both was stood up and was already turned around and looking. It was three, uh, I can't say where they was from or what they were, but it was like a robotic creature because they moved mechanically. And they got to us, two of them got a hold of Charlie, one got a hold of myself. The very minute that they grabbed me, I felt an injection in my arm. They lifted us and took us aboard. This female looking creature, she came out. Now she had regular facial features, ears, and eyes, nose. The only difference I seen in her than what we would, and if you think about it and look at your hands, these two fingers right here are longer and they was just a little bit longer than ours on her. And she took this right hand and she run it up my, down the back of my throat. Well, I started choking. He said the beings who took him made it known they did not mean any harm. And that's when they picked me up and they carried me out, sent me back down by the river. A story that dominated the front page of the Mississippi press for over a week. UFOs were the talk of the state. NASA got involved. Police lines were busy 24 hours a day. The Air Force, they spent their own money to come down here to investigate this and to talk to people and interview witnesses and things. Hickson and Parker gave matching statements to police, passed polygraphs and lie detector tests. But one reporter wrote security cameras in the area showed nothing that night. Others questioned the legitimacy of the polygraphs. The spotlight was too much for Parker. This happened in 1973, and I never, ever had told none of my family what happened. He lived on, on the run, basically, from, from society itself, because, uh, of course, he, people thought he was crazy. We're trying to get air conditioners fixed around here. My name is Rebecca Davis. Um, I'm the executive director for Main Street Pascagoula. Over the past year, Davis helped connect Parker and his story to present day Pascagoula. In 1973, was a different age, a different time, and it was taboo. You didn't talk about stuff like that. People, I think, today are more open-minded. Book signings, events, all with the support of the city and its mayor. A lot of people uh, that are interested in it that today uh, that weren't alive then and had not completely heard the story. People need to know about it. Today, people are more open about their experiences. After the incident happened, right, we went down there, uh, uh, me and my dad and mom went down, um, down to, the, to the place where it happened at. It's like a big old spaceship had landed and, and it's it, it was just incredible. It was just like, just freaked me out. My dad had an unloading dock uh, between the bridges. 
where the aliens came. Well, he was on one side, they were on the other side. Did he see the aliens? No, he did not see the aliens. <laughs> Honestly, but some of those guys on the shrimp boat might have if they'd have been smoking the same stuff. <laughs> After decades of hiding, Parker no longer lets his experience impact his life. If you kind of look to your left, that's about where the pier was. It's, it's really hard to tell where anything is by now. Do you ever come out here anymore, or is this? Oh yeah, I fish here all the time. That's awesome. And that's the reason I come. I don't come to look at the side or to dwell on anything, because this is something you can't really dwell on. It would bother you a lot. I remember a time that I didn't want to come back here. I could care less. The dock where it all happened is unrecognizable, but a new reminder was put in place this year, a permanent marker of a defining moment in Parker's life. How does this make you feel when you see this here? Well, I have mixed emotions. It makes me feel good that the city is uh, admitting what happened. Do you wish you would have told your story sooner? No, I think I picked the right time to tell it, and I'll tell you why. If I had talked about this any sooner than what I did, the new would be wore off. And now I'm keeping the attention on it, and the people are a lot more conscious of what's going on. Parker is simply searching for answers. I'm just hunting answers for myself. Now, whether we'll ever find them or not, I don't know, but I'll go on my deathbed hunting them. With photojournalist Andrew Snadeke, I'm Chloe Nordquist reporting. Hmm. It's fascinating, it really is. We said, you know, why would you say something like that if it wasn't true and right. invite that kind of scrutiny? Right. Right? Exactly. All right. We'll be right back, everyone. And Chopper 13 is over.